Sander Berger, is there a sort of fulsome prognosis of how long he's going to be out for? No, we've he's had an X-ray straight away, which is fine, all clear, and then had a, an MRI scan this morning. So that's it. Wait and see. Right. And this might sound like a daft question, but is he out of Saturday then? Yeah. Listen, unless. <laughs> We've been really precautionary at the minute, so I'd say yeah, um, because we tell him to keep weight off his foot. We want everything to come back. If everything's all clear and you know, and it's one of those where it's not restricting him and, and the pain's okay, we, we can get him involved. But as it stands now, is we, we've been ultra safe, and until we get, we've had the X-rays all clear, great. We'll see what the scan says, and then we'll take it from there. Um, George Baldock. As we run through the list, sadly, of injuries, how's yeah, he? Yeah, so George has got a um, a strain uh, on, on his side, which is probably going to take some time to clear up. So he's he's more than likely going to be out. Yeah, he's in a lot of discomfort at the minute. Uh, and again, he's, yeah. if you if you're asking me now, there's no way I can see him playing. Wake up in the morning, he might want to take painkillers, stuff like that. But I'm just looking at him and me knowing that area and how restrictive it can be. No, I would have said no. Is that sort of a couple of a couple of weeks of a job rather yeah, than well, just we'll focusing on stuff? Yeah, you, you see how they how they respond because anything in your middle, when they, whenever you move, you feel it all the time. Like when you, if it's a hamstring, you don't do anything that hurts, and you think you're getting better. Does that make sense? So he's going to feel it every day, all the time. But then as soon as that pain goes and you restriction, and generally then it's pretty quick. So we'll see. But the, like I said, our initial look at him. Obviously, yesterday and this morning is the. I, I can't see any, any way. Uh, a couple of final in, injury pointers. You were there was a hope, a wonder whether Ahmed Hodzic might be available to you this weekend. Um, is he still open? Listen, it'd be. The thing is with with an L. Listen, he's he's been kicking some balls today and you know running around the training pitch. Um, but it's easy worth the risk, you know. When it's a muscle injury, is it worth the risk? Are we going to damage it? And so, regardless how I'm feeling about the situation, I think we have to um, speak together and, and be sensible. Um, how pleasing as a squad or as the manager, clearly of the squad, that some players are having to do roles that are not quite their usual role, and that they are, a, well, roughly speaking, a square peg in a round hole, and yet the results are still coming. Yeah, we don't want it. It's the sooner the better. We want everybody back, and I want the other headache. I want the headache of you know speaking to players, good players, and saying that I'm not going with them that day. But we know, and probably this this first 12 games has, has really shown that that we're going to need all 20 odd players. You know, all 24 players, we're going to need them. We're going to need them at some point in the season, and then we have we've shown that already. So I think when, uh, if, and when we start getting them all back, and I'm leaving good players out. We're doing it in the knowledge that there's going to be some point later in the season when they need us. So that's what I want. As, as much as yet, all hands on deck and, and everyone's fighting to, you know, to keep the performances going, to keep trying to battle and win points. Yeah, that's brilliant. It's what we want, but we'd rather have that other problem. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of doesn't help, kind of pointedly, when a sub striker gets himself booked and suspended. Have Have you had a word with McBurney? Yeah. Yeah. I think he'd already apologised to the players before I saw him. So, yeah. How much is in it? I don't know. But the booking in the last game when he jumped in the crowd. Listen, that moment with the fans and and does it do a lot of good? Yeah, it does a lot of good. But I'm the one who's got to be without him now. You know. Uh, and he gets that. And he's also, I think he has to understand that it's Oli. And with what's gone on in the past and what people say, regardless of what he's done, people say it's ten times worse, you know? And that, that is his territory now until he, and he's got to learn to manage that as well. So, um, yeah. And, and like you say, you strike him in form, you want him, you need him. So we've got to do without him as well now. Mm. Uh, in the uh, the post-match interview that you gave, well, presumably to others, but to us as well on uh, on the other night, the, the point raised about time wasting within a football match is oh. is that a kind of a current blight on the game? Hundred percent. Listen, we've looked into it now and got some figures. So we had 
according to all the stats, 66% possession or whatever it was. And you know I'm not big on possession, I'm just going to talk here now and how that equates into time. So with the five minutes injury time, that's 95 minutes. So we, we've had the ball, you know, 64 minutes, 63 minutes. Um, I, don't know, I can get the figures. And they've had, so they've had the ball arrest, 32 minutes. They had 19 goal kicks, averaging 30 seconds a time. Nine and a half minutes. So I'd all let the total up when they had possession in their 30 odd minutes, the ball weren't in play for 24 minutes. How can that be right? It can't be right. You know, it can't be right. We had, go back to Birmingham game, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Um, the referee stopped the game for 13 minutes for subs, for injuries, for tellings off, for bookings, cautions. He stopped the game for 13 minutes, only put seven up. So we missed time there, plus Birmingham with 21 minutes when the ball's out of play. It can't be right, you know, it's, well, it's not right. Do you as managers talk about this type of thing? Yeah, I think everyone's... It, my point is everyone, and, and the answer from the referee on Saturday is, look, well, we can't do it for one and not the other. I mean, but you have to understand context. You're booking someone in the 81st minute when he's took less time than he's been taking in the first minute. Like, it doesn't work, it's not... You can get rid of it. And when certain teams, so for us, for example, we know that we're going to face it home. We have to deal with it somehow, we have to deal with it. But we're allowing a tactic to just grow and grow and grow. And like I say, out of 30, 32 minutes, QPR have got the ball in their control. 24 minutes, that's out of play. It's not in play. It's not, it's not good. Because so, so, as, a, as a debate, it's like, well, if, if uh, well, with respect, an inferior team is going to a better one. In in those circumstances, kind of what what would you do, sort of thing? And is that where the argument stops? Yeah, but, you, but the only way you can make it, you can make it fair for everyone by just adding on the time it stopped. But the point, why pretend? Why go like that? We're stopping it. It's pretending. Why, that's what winds me up. It's not the. It's not the time waste. It's the, it's not dealt with. Are you pretending to deal with? You're lying. You're not doing it properly. So, that's all you do, you just do it properly, do it properly. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be, I'm going to get a good conversation and, and see, so yeah. Uh, listen, I didn't, I had a conversation about decisions, you know, when Sandro's pulled back, I'm annoyed about he's injured. Um, you can see, I think, but they're decisions. It's black and white time, telling the time and counting seconds, it's simple. It's simple, you know, you can't, you can't get that wrong. And is it the responsibility of the referees to stamp it out or yeah, the should thing is, football it's like, it's try like, and not dark arts? Yeah, football's got to sort it. Yeah. If we're going to accept, yeah, it's a dark arts, all right, that's fine. So then, but then referees are still, all right, if we're dealing with it, deal with it. It's 21 minutes, it's out of play. You're saying this, well, we should have had 21 minutes injury time, shouldn't we? <laughs> you know, unless you are going to allow. So there's a free kick in front of us, 65 seconds before it was taken. So why do we stop it? Like we're going from we take 65 seconds for every free kick. The people pay money to come and watch, you know? They do, they pay money to come and watch. Uh, and it's not me, but na it's not me being naive, and, and uh, then when we go away and we're winning, do we slow it down? Yeah, but where's, where's the line? Where's the line, you know? Get the, get the thing off and just have the, I know there's been calls for it before, have the, the clock and it just stops on the balls out of play and have a 60 minute game. It wouldn't. It could actually be a better product. We're not bad. Our games are generally ball in play over 60 minutes. I think the average is around 54, 55 hours is generally, you know, 60 odd minutes. So we, we often puffed. We like the ball in play, sort of 50, 50 minutes or so. We had possession of the ball, ball in play, and we weren't good enough to break them down. So that that's where we got it wrong. <clears throat> but as a product in the game, we've got yeah. People paid money to watch it. Mm. Uh, moving on then to Stoke as the as the next challenge. Um, firstly, what what's your appraisal of them right now? Um, seeing the last couple of games, and they've been they've been different, totally different. Um, against Watford, I think the four 0 exaggerated the things that went wrong in the game. You know, for 60 minutes it was pretty even, even though they were one down, and the two shapes lended themselves to be man for man all over the pitch. Uh, and then after that, yeah, 2 0, 3 0, 4, and it was like each mistake got punished. Um, and Watford ran away with it. And then last night was a more tighter, 
less aggressive press, if you like, from from Stoke and be a bit more compact in the threat on the counter. So, yeah, which which served them well. You know, they did they did have good opportunities. I know they got the header towards the end, but they had some good opportunities on the counter as well. Mm. Uh, what, what I suppose, loosely, what do you want to see as an improvement after the frustrations of the past couple of games? And as you go to, as you go to Stoke, listen, I take how we, how we played the other night in in every game we, between now and the end of the season, um, and we'd be fine. Um, and away games have every away game has been different to, to each of his own games so far, so that it's naturally going to be a different game. So I'm not looking at the last two. I'm looking at like Preston and. and Hull and Swansea and Middlesbrough and, and those games and thinking right, we know it's generally tougher away in terms of teams aren't sitting in as much against us, uh, slowing the game down as much, you know, they're trying to hurt us probably as much as we're trying to hurt them, so it's usually a different dynamic to the game, um, but with that means we have to be better defensively and it's not just like locking out a counter attack and things like that, so um, we, we, we're going to be tested, we're going to have to deal with our threats. Um, and, and I think that's what's more important, we, knowing what we're going to face. We're going to face a... We got beat the week and QPR did, did really well Tuesday night, but this is going to be a tougher game for us in different ways, more in space.